sorry. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. May the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom, both now and up into the age of all ages, amen. Wishing all a blessed feast of the palms and of the entry of the Lord into Jerusalem. Um, <clears throat> as you know, this is all a great major feast, one of the seven of in the calendar of, of, of our church. And even though it's in the fast, it's more of in connection with Lazarus Day, it's more of a segue or a connection or a link between the great Lent and the great and holy Passion Week. Um, as you know, yesterday we celebrated in the annual tune, right? And um, today is the festal tune. We're still fasting this whole time. In the early days, I'm sure, not sure if you knew, actually the Lent and the Holy Work were separate. The church and her divine wisdom decided to connect the two so we, could, so we prepare for the Holy Week with the Great Lent. <clears throat> and so um, in the feast, there's a lot of people who have different questions. Uh, I had something else prepared, but um, some of the children were asking a lot of questions why we do these things. I thought we answered them before, but it's nevertheless, we'll take it as an opportunity to ask you if you know the reasons behind some of these things. So the first question is, why do we have palms? What do what do they represent? No one knows. Okay. Oh uh, wait. No. Yes. They put the palms on the floor. Yes, for for the Lord um, to to trample upon. Yes, but they also carried in their hands. So. Actually, um, both um, St. Matthew and St. John, um, or St. John only, describes that it, it was from the, the, the palm trees. Um, but other, the other evangelists just mentioned it was from the trees. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. But a couple of years ago, we explained, we said there's three main reasons. One is because we said glory to God in the highest, right? And I Faith and, towards, and goodwill towards men. So the palms were the highest trees available. So they're saying to the Lord that he is above all. He is the king. He is the one that is above all of us. And even whatever is high, according to man, we put it under the feet of Christ, under the feet of God, right? So this is what we should remember on this day, and not just this day, but every day, right? The second reason is because there's a verse in the Psalms that says, the, the Holy One or the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree, right? So just like God is high, the righteous person is lofty in God's eyes because they are doing his will and he is pleased with them. And they are, in a sense, above the world or living above the world, not of the world, even though they're in the world, right? Um, so we also are reflecting that the Lord Jesus Christ is the holiest of all. He is the great high priest, right? <clears throat> he is the, not only does he offer sacrifices, um, like the other priests, but as St. Paul describes the, the other priests, like us, we have to offer for our own sins and also for the people. But he is without sin. And he didn't offer a lamb or a, a, goat, or a goat or incense. He offered up himself. So he is the great high priest who offers up the greatest sacrifice of all, which is himself. <clears throat> and finally, um, in, back in those days, when a king returned from battle, he would, they would welcome him into the city, not on a horse, but on a donkey. Um, not, um, usually there would be chariots and things like that, but this was a symbol of victory, and the palms were a symbol of victory. And they also used to use another kind of branch. Anyone know? The fathers explain that most likely it was not just palm tree branches. There were another type of branch. Olive, very good. Why? Um, well, um, <clears throat> St. Severus of Antioch says there had to have been olive branches as well because they were on the Mount of Olives. <laughs> um, but not only that, um, it indicates peace and reconciliation between God and, and man, right? Any, remember any other place in the scripture where you see an olive branch, the Old Testament? 
Noah's Ark, exactly, right? So that signified the peace. Um, after the tribulation, God said, I will, I will never do this again on earth, So I, and I will bring peace. <clears throat> right? So this is what St. Severus uh, explains here. Um, the loving, his, Christ's loving coming to be with us, he said he accomplished this not because of our righteousness, of course, because we are with sin, which didn't even exist, but because of his mercy. In the same way, indeed, it is as the dove holding and carrying its feet the breeze of the olive tree. Okay? Um, <clears throat> so um, that's the reason why we have the palms and the olive branches. Well, I kind of already mentioned the donkey, but what does the donkey symbolize other than that, other than that he is king? Yes. Yes, because he came in humility, right? Um, <clears throat> even though he's the king of kings and the lord of lords, he humbled himself, right, As to, to teach us um, this is the way, right? <clears throat> and if you look, we don't have any prophecies today, um, but we had prophecies yesterday, and almost all of the prophecies actually had to do with today, not, not yesterday. Um, there are a couple that have to do with resurrection, um, but primarily... The, there were prophecies of Palm Sunday. As we said, they, they come as a package, as a, as a preparation for Holy Week and as a culmination of the Great Lent. So this is probably one of the greatest prophecies of, of Palm Sunday in Zechariah 9.9. 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Who comes? to? Is it the king that's supposed to come to the servants or the servants are supposed to come to the king? Right. This is the great humility of our Lord. Right. He is just in having salvation. Where do we see the word salvation today? We've said it like maybe a hundred times already. Yeah. So we didn't, what word did we say that refers to salvation? Hosanna. Hosanna means save us, right? Um, <clears throat> so this is the fulfillment of the prophecy that Zechariah wrote hundreds of years before Christ um, even took flesh. He is just in having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey. So he's humble riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. Well, a lot of people say, well, was it a donkey or a colt? Because they're kind of different things. Some people try to explain saying, no, it's one and the same. But if we read the fathers, no, there's there's two animals. Why? Okay, we'll get to into a second. I'll let you think, right? But another prophecy that we read yesterday was in Genesis 49, where Israel or Jacob blesses uh, his children, the 12 tribes, right? <clears throat> and he kind of doesn't really bless the first three <laughs> um, for, for the reason being he wants to um, elevate the blessing of Judah. Why? Because Christ came from the tribe of Judah, um, as well as King David and, and so on. So, so that's why they say the son of, he's, he was proclaimed as the son of David, even though the Christ himself did not like or prefer this term, because it was uh, maybe too bold of a statement, or the Israelites misunderstood this term as the worldly king. So today, they were glorifying him as a worldly king, um, and he said, my kingdom is not of this world. So that's why he preferred the term son of God or son of man uh, uh, in, in, in comparison to um, the son of David. <clears throat> so anyway, in, in this blessing of Judah, it says that, this righteous one that will come from the tribe of Judah will bind his donkey to the vine. And the fathers explained this to be more of a union between um, all of us and Christ and the church, right? As he says, you are the vine, I am the vine dresser, or my father is the vine dresser, I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> and so um, here's the union of, of Christ to, uh, the, that Christ makes of man to God through himself, okay? Um, I already said the, the other animal here is the colt. So basically, the fathers explain that the donkey relates to Israel um, because, like the prophecy says, the donkey does not know its master, right? Even though God kept coming and coming and blessing, they rejected him, right? And on the other side, the colt, the, the one on whom no one sat, that was far, that, that the disciples had to get from a, another place, um, and they brought to him, and he Christ willingly, or he willingly accepted it, willingly accepted Christ to sit on it. So this is the symbol of the Gentiles who came from afar, were not originally um, accepted, but God wanted 
to to bless them and to be enthroned in, in their life. These are us, right? The Gentiles. And so both are loosed from their bonds through, through the apostles here who are the, the priests of the church. And they brought these things to Christ, that Christ would reign over them, right? Um, <clears throat> and here the, loose, the loosing of the bonds, that's what happened yesterday when, when Christ told the disciples to, to loose him, to loose Lazarus, because he, he was resurrected, but he was still, um, in a sense, wrapped with these um, burial clothes. Um, and so who did Christ ask to loose him? The apostles. So this is a symbol here of the sacrament of the repentance and confession where Christ asks all the priests of his to loose the bounds of sin of, of his children after they repent. <clears throat> okay. Um, any other animals that are mentioned indirectly today? There's two more very important ones. So actually, on the 10th of Nisan in, in the Jewish calendar, um, it was there were they were prep, preparing for the Passover feast. And what's the most important animal in the Passover? The lamb, right? So on this day, um, the lambs would enter into the city, most likely through the sheep gate. That's why it was called the sheep gate. Um, sorry. I got ahead of myself, so we'll go to this one. <laughs> um, apologize. <laughs> okay, let's just go to the lion first. Okay, so the lion, the tribe of Judah, right? Same thing as we were saying from Genesis 49. Right, And this is pretty much word for word, um, with a few exceptions. Um, Jacob, or Israel, says, Judah, you are he whom your brother shall praise. The name Judah means praise. And so... That's what, another reason why Christ came from the tribe of Judah, because he is being praised today, right, as, as God and as King and as Lord and as Savior. He says, your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies, the devil. So here's the victory with the palms. Your father's children shall bow down before you. Here's the worship that we offer him today. <laughs> Judah is a lion's whelp. This is the power of the lion, uh, the king of, of every, every animal, right? He bows down. He lies down as a lion. Here's the death of Christ on the cross. And as a lion, he shall, who shall raise him, right? This is the resurrection. Um, and then it says, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, that he shall be king forever. Okay, so that's why, the, that's where we see the lion today. Okay? There is not really a lion on the day, but here's the symbolic reference. Okay, and then um, the lamb, as I already mentioned, um, as, as it says, the lambs were brought in to be selected, to ins be inspected, to be cleansed, and to be prepared for the Passover. So Lord enters as the Lamb of God who carries away the sin of the world, and he is the Lamb also to be sacrificed on the great Passover day. Um, <clears throat> and so um, this is, um, and actually there was a gate for the king, there was a gate for the sheep, but all the gates are for the Lord, right? We ask him to enter into our hearts anyway and every way. Um, <clears throat> and this is, I think, um, the, the main point of what, we are trying to accomplish in, in our prayers um, today. Um, they also threw garments, right, on the ground, on the on the donkey, and the colt. Why? Kind of a hard one. Hmm? Anyone know? Okay. So remember in Genesis, <laughs> right? What happened with the garments, right? Um, after Adam and Eve ate. And they knew of their nakedness and they began to know evil. They already knew good, but they began to know evil. And then they were ashamed and they hid. And uh, after they realized their mistake and God pointed it out to them, right? Um, they had sewn for themselves um, clothes of fig leaves. This is why Christ curses the fig tree tonight or tomorrow, right? Um, because they're using the fig tree to cover themselves. Does a fig tree able to cover our sin? No. Only Christ is able to cover our sin. Um, and then God, God made for them tunics of skin. Some people say this is relating to the sacrifice of Christ. Um, and some people even say he, he sacrificed an animal to show them or to prepare them for the, for the cross um, or just the concept 
of sacrifice. We're not sure exactly. Um, even some of the fathers kind of uh, dis- uh, have different opinions. Um, but the important thing is that we are covered not with our clothes, but with Christ. God is the one who shields us um, from, from the harm or, or the consequences of sin after we repent and come to him. <clears throat> so that's why we, and, and, and also, um, he is our protection. And so um, this is what they were signifying um, by putting anything they had, um, again, at his feet and under him as a throne. <clears throat> so the last point, we're, we'll talk a little bit about um, St. Methodius, um, who, who contemplated on the children. The ch- today is one of the greatest days where we see Christ praising the, the children and the children praising Christ. Um, even uh, this infuriated the chief priests and the scribes, and um, they couldn't handle all of this glory being given to Christ. Right? It says they were indignant and said to him, do you hear what they're saying? And he said, yeah. Have you never read out of the mouths of babes and infants you have perfected praise? This is a fulfillment of, of the prophecies. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, Methodius con- uh, continues by saying, these thankless men, the, the chief priests and scribes, saw and by means of his miracles, they handled the wonder-working God, and yet they remained in unbelief. Hopefully this does not apply to any of us. He says they saw a man blind. So he starts explaining all the, the miracles that they had recently seen. They saw a man blind from birth last Sunday, proclaiming to them the God who had restored his sight. They saw a paralytic two weeks ago who had grown up, as it were, and become one with his infirmity at his bidding loosed from his disease. They saw Lazarus yesterday who was made an exile from the region of death. <clears throat> they saw all these things, right? Um and they heard that he had walked on the water. They heard of the wine th- that he had turned from the water. They heard of the bread that was eaten, the, the mere multiplication of, of the five loaves and the two fish. They heard that the demons had been put to flight, the sick restored to health. Their very streets proclaimed the deeds of his wonder. Their roads declared his healing power to those who journeyed on them. All Judea was filled with his benefit. Yet now, when they hear the divine praises, they ask, who is this? What a funny question. I think it's pretty obvious, right? Um, <clears throat> and the reason why I bring this up is sometimes we also, how many wonders and miracles have do we experience um, in our whole lives or even part of our life of, of how great God is? And then sometimes we come and ask, well, who is God? Where is he? What is he doing? Like, we, we don't want to be like these people. We want to be like the children, right? <clears throat> Who, who, with a pure and loving heart, are praising Him, um, rejoicing in Him, and not overthinking um, who He is. Right? <clears throat> then he continues with what he is saying: "Oh, the madness of these falsely named teachers! Oh, incredulous fathers and foolish seniors! Not ours. Um, the children acknowledge their Creator, but their unbelieving parents say, 'Who is this?'" He says, "The age that was young and inexperienced sang praises to God." Well, they, they who are old in wickedness inquired, who is this? Um, infants praise his divinity. This is what we want to be like. That's why the Lord said you have to be like a little children, to do this, to praise his divinity in your life now. <clears throat> uh, children piously offer the sacrifice of praise, while profane chief priests are impiously indeed. Um, <clears throat> so in, in, in summary, um, we see the palms and the olives that reflect the peace of God, the kingship of God, the highness, the great high priest, who is king, priest, and prophet, right? We see the donkey and colt that the Lord is saying, I, I'm going to be Lord over the Jew and Gentile alike. There, there's no one who's not going to be limited from, from coming to me as long as you come humble and loving and willing to be his servant and asking him to cleanse you from your sins. He, he will accept. Um, so this, this was a, a transformative understanding of who God was. Um, he was not just the king or lord over a, a, a select group of people. God wants to be the God of all and the king of all. <clears throat> the question is, will, will I let him or not? Um, uh, we see the power of the lion, uh, of, of God's power, but also his humility and his love willing to sacrifice himself as the lamb. Right. So we respond as the young children glorifying him and raising our hearts to him. Um, in every day and in every way. 
Um, <clears throat> so um, uh, just one last thing, and we've mentioned this before, but uh, basically these next few days are, I think, one of the best and holiest and more most important for our uh, spiritual growth. Um, even if we can't attend, we at least we contemplate and we grow um, in in our communication with Him, re- realizing that God is King on His throne today, but He's also King of the cross, right? And th- this throne is one and the same. And so, the same thing with the crown of thorns, one and the same. The crown of thorns is the crown of glory. And so, when we come to Him, right, we should also be willing to come any place, whether it's the cross or Gethsemane or the suffering, um, we, we rejoice in just being with our King. Um, so may the God of grace give us the, the blessing of today, but also this blessed week. We can die and rise with him. Glory be to him now and to the age of ages. Today the sayings are fulfilled from the pro-